Hello and welcome back to our FCS Dynasty in NCAA Football 2006. Today, the Southern Utah Thunderbirds travel to take on the Cal Poly Mustangs in a Pac-10 matchup. Southern Utah looking to become bowl eligible. They are 5-5 five five on the season. Cal Poly has already claimed their bowl eligibility. Brandon Lee, number one player on the Thunderbirds, 91 overall fullback. It'll be interesting to see if the Thunderbirds actually use him today. Bryce King, Jericho Stevens, and C.J. Moreland. And then on defense, we still have Adam Joseph and Donald Lee Jr. as well. Juan Freeman, 82 overall wide receiver. Hasn't made a huge impact this season. Only one touchdown. Still looking for a big game from him. Brandon Red at right guard, 80 overall. He's had a great season. 50 pancakes. Only one sack allowed. Owen Gregory, of course, having a rough year. Seven touchdowns, 18 interceptions. But he does have four rushing touchdowns. On to Cal Poly, Demarius Lamache, Eric Spears Jr., the backup quarterback, who could start for a number of teams. Ralph William, Sean Horton, a non-subscriber, right tackle. Greg Ford, defensive tackle. He's a beast. And another non-subscriber player. Alexander Connor, quarterback, their starter. He's had a fantastic season so far. 2,800 yards, 24 scores. And he also has 501 rushing yards with 9 scores. Dan Williamson. He is, of course, having one of the best seasons out of all of our FCS players. 82 pancakes, 1 sack allowed. Desmond Lewis, Joseph Lozano, Raul Lozano III, and Paxton Erdley, and Malik Higgins. And that rounds out the Cal Poly... Mustangs subscriber players. Let's take a look at the Thunderbirds schedule. The first game they put up 24 points and Army put up 76 points on them. So not a very good game. But then they went into the number one toughest stadium in the nation and beat Air Force. So this team is just so strange to me. Then they barely beat Idaho State. They got shut out by Buffalo. New Mexico put up 98 points on them. Then they beat Sacramento State by a field goal. They beat Northern Arizona. Got shut out by San Diego. And Eastern Washington, they destroyed them. And then they just lost to uh, Northern Colorado. They have two subscriber versus subscriber games left, so I will not be using them at all unless they win one of those games and make it to a bowl game. Cal Poly, they started off 1-0, and then they lost to Murray State. Murray State only has two wins on the season. That game was insane. Then they beat Villanova 63-7. They beat Idaho State 31-8. And beat San Diego 34-14. Then they beat Portland State and Northern Arizona. And then the shocking upset loss to Northern Colorado. And then they played angry the next week, destroying Sacramento State 77-10. But I have Cal Poly winning this one over Southern Utah. I just, I don't think the Thunderbirds offense is going to get anything going. They've really struggled in these types of games. And I think Alexander Connor is going to, have a pretty decent game as well. He's got Raul Lozano III, who is one of the best halfbacks in the country. Over 1,000 rushing yards, 624 receiving yards, 20 total touchdowns. So look for him to make an impact here today. Cal Poly will return the opening kickoff to start things off. And the kick is deep. To the one-yard line. Desmond Lewis on the return, up past the 20-yard line, taken down at the 23-yard line. And we will see Alexander Connor, Raul Lozano III, Desmond Lewis, Malik Higgins, and Dan Williamson on the offense for our subscriber players. Connor under center to start things off. First play of the game. Those all-white uniforms for Southern Utah looking nice. And first play of the game, Sean Sherman comes in on the pressure and injures his shoulder on the play. But that'll bring up second down and 10. As the Thunderbirds look to put pressure on the quarterback early in this game. Connor with 18 interceptions this season. He's had a couple rough games, and that's really, you know, pushed that number higher. But he's only fumbled once on the season, so he's doing pretty good holding on to the football when he runs. And he's going to throw, and he's going to be sacked. And that is Adam Joseph, the defensive tackle, our subscriber. That's his fourth sack on the season. He now has 17 tackles, 11 for a loss, four sacks, one pass deflection, and a forced fumble. As Alexander Connor is finding a hard, 
Yeah, finding it hard to find a rhythm. And Connor's going to come out under center again. Four wide receivers set. Third down of 16. Connor pressured, and he's going to be sacked. That is C.J. Moreland. That's his first sack of his career for the cornerback. Moreland, of course, has made little impact for the Thunderbirds this season. Only 28 tackles, one for a loss, and two interceptions. So nothing crazy on the stat sheet going to jump out at you. When you look at C.J. Moreland, he's allowed a lot of touchdown receptions this season. And he needs a lot of work to improve for year two of this dynasty. Love back to return the punt. Freeman, right side, breaks the tackle, gets up to the 41-yard line. But there is a flag for holding. That'll drop them back 10 extra yards. And they'll start it off at the 42-yard line of Cal Poly. So great field position. For the offense to start things off, Owen Gregory has a short field to work with right now. And this should be a scoring drive at least. Maybe a field goal. Touchdown, best case scenario here. Worst case scenario, pick six, which we've seen quite often. Gregory under center. Pitches it out to Brandon Lee. The fullback's going to throw it, and that is almost completed out to Prince McCutcheon. But too bad Brandon Lee does not have a strong arm. That's probably why he's a fullback and not a quarterback, Southern Utah. Gregory in the shotgun. Cameron Matthews next to him. And there's going to be a fumble, and that is recovered by Paxton Erdley, the defensive tackle. That's his second fumble recovery on the year. I don't know what just happened with the offense for the Thunderbirds. And apparently Greg Ford is breakdancing on the field. Interesting. So Cal Poly takes over just like that. After two plays of offense, the Thunderbirds give it away. Connor under center. He's going to drop back to throw it. Right side. Almost intercepted. Very dangerous throw. He wanted Malik Higgins. So we're seven and a half minutes into the video now. And we've only played a minute and 13 seconds of the game very <laughs> very long first quarter so far Connor gonna throw it again right side connects with the fullback I think that's Brock and he's got the first down up to the 37 yard line for the Cal Poly Mustangs number one offense in the nation the Mustangs 542 yards per game they have been absolutely dominant this season. I formation. Connor gonna hand to Lozano, who jukes inside and only picks up a couple yards. But he has 1,044 yards on the season, 14 touchdowns. He's fumbled it five times though, and he also has 29 receptions, 624 yards, and six touchdowns. So he is an all-purpose back as Alexander Connor throws another incomplete pass there as we see a drop frame that was intended for Desmond Lewis. So we're going to see a third and eight for Capale. I hear Cowbells brings back memories of Mississippi State Dynasty. Connor going to drop back to throw it again and over the middle he's picked off. Where was he throwing that? Bates with the interception. That was Connor's 19th INT of the year. That was an awful throw. I would have tested CJ Moreland on the outside. I believe he was matched up with Desmond Lewis. And I would pick Lewis to win that matchup every time. So the Thunderbirds back on offense. Maybe they'll get past two plays without a turnover. Nice completion over the middle for a first down. Attacking on the five-yard face mask. That'll get them to the 46-yard line. The face mask was on Joseph Lozano. For the cornerback, he came into this game with 32 tackles. Two for a loss, two picks for 69 yards on returns, and one pick six. 12 pass deflections and two forced fumbles on the season. He has been an absolute monster when it comes to hitting people, most of his tackles are big hits, and he's insane. First and 10, Gregory in the shotgun by himself. 
He's going to throw it. Quick pass deflected away intended for Prince McCutcheon. So he's having a hard time hooking up with him today. Haven't seen him throw it to um, Jaquan Freeman at all. We've seen Brandon Lee throw the football. Well, let's see if the fullback can actually get a run. There's a nice carry for Matthews. Only picked up a couple, but a nice broken tackle. Third down and seven. Gregory, play action, throws it out, and that went nowhere. So Thunderbirds stall out on offense yet again. No surprise. This has been one of the worst offenses in this entire dynasty. They're just having a hard time getting anything going, especially in the subscriber versus subscriber games. Back deep to return is Malik Higgins. And actually that wasn't Malik Higgins. Oh yes it was. My bad. It's 26th return on the year. He didn't get far that time. He has zero punt returns for touchdowns this year, but he does have 672 kick return yards with two touchdowns to go along with his 35 receptions, 916 yards, and five scores. But Malik Higgins has nine drops. Connor under center. And we're just about at the halfway point of the first quarter. Nice completion out to the left side to Johnson. His first reception of the game. He's averaging 3.2 yard or er, receptions per game, 66.3 yards per game. This Cal Poly passing attack is just vicious. So hard to stop. Even if Connor's throwing four interceptions, he's got five or six touchdowns, so you can't really contain him too much. Four wide receivers set. Lozano gets a carry and he goes nowhere. Bryce King coming up in run support. His 31st tackle of the season. He also has one for a loss, a pass deflection, and a forced fumble. Still looking for his first career interception. Second down and 10, I formation. Tight end up to the left. Connor going to throw it. All day to throw it, and it's picked off again. Was that Bates again? <laughs> oh my goodness. Connor now with 20 picks on the year, and that was Bates, his second of the quarter. Something is just off with Connor's accuracy today. That was not a good throw. Bates was running the route for Johnson right there, and an easy takeaway. Southern Utah now with a chance to take a lead here, possibly get on the scoreboard with something anything they need this win to become bowl eligible they do have one more game but that's going to be a rough one as well so I'm not picking them in either of the next two games especially with throws like that as that pass hits the dirt goes nowhere again Gregory's still hoping to get to 1500 passing yards on the season and he has started every single game this year so, not very good throwing the football. Gregory throws it, and he's picked off. Joseph Lozano, his third of the season. And it looked like he ran the route for the receiver as he takes a bow in front of the home crowd. So the quarterback's just trading interceptions right here, and that was another terrible throw from Owen Gregory. 20 interceptions on the year. Oh, 19 actually. Will Connor throw another interception? Let's find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Connor to throw. Quick pass and a nice completion. Picks up about seven yards. Quarterbacks are playing outstanding today. They combined four of 13 with three interceptions. Second down and three upcoming for the Mustangs. This first quarter seems like it's just dragging a little bit. So many takeaways and incomplete passes. And Connor's going to throw again. Wide open is Lozano close to the marker. They're going to mark him just short of the first down, though. Third and one upcoming for Cal Poly. I would just hand it off. 
to Lozano or do a quarterback sneak, something of that effect. As they run out some of the clock. Goal line formation. Malik Higgins in motion to the left side. And they're going to throw it out of the goal line and they get the first down out of it. That was Johnson with another reception today. Three consecutive completions now for Connor. Starting to find a rhythm, which is good because he's been pretty bad so far. Coming into this game, he needed 192 yards to reach 3,000 passing yards for the year. And he's going to hand it off. No play action. Connor. And deflected away. Bates on the coverage. Again, that guy is playing outstanding football today. Two interceptions and a nice deflection. He's all over the receivers like white on rice. Second down and ten. 128 remains in the first. Connor to throw it again. Offensive line doing a great job. Connor, deep shot, and it's caught by Desmond Lewis. Bryce King thought he had an interception. He was so close. Let's take another look. Oh, my goodness. King might have took that one all the way back for six if he was able to get his hands on it. But what a catch for Desmond Lewis. His 31st on the season. He's now over 600 receiving yards. He also has four touchdowns and only one drop on the year. He's been very sure-handed. Shotgun formation, two halfbacks in the backfield. Three wide receivers set. Connor to throw it again. And over the middle, Desmond Lewis has another one. First down, about a 13-yard pickup. The fifth first down of the game for Cal Poly. We are now under one minute remaining in the first quarter. 48 yards today for Desrin. It's now up to 628. Connor to throw it again. Nice play action. And connects to the fullback, Brock, for about a four or five yard pickup. And they only gave him credit for three yards on that one, surprisingly. 30 seconds left in the first quarter. Second down and seven, four wide receivers set. Connor gonna hand it off to Lozano this time. He'll pick up four yards. Inching closer to the first down marker. Eight play drive for 66 yards currently. Two minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. Third down and three, they're gonna snap the ball, Connor. Hit as he throws it, and he's intercepted, and it's Bryce King. He finally has his first career interception, and it stops a very nice Cal Poly drive right in the end zone. Take another look. Connor hit as he throws it, deflected back. Bryce King, sure-handed safety. He hasn't really touched the football at all this season. When he finally does, he holds on to it. And that'll end the first quarter. No score, sadly. Four turnovers there in the first quarter. Very sloppy, and the Southern Utah Thunderbirds are actually going to start this drive from the one-yard line. Not a great spot for them to be in. Tight end in motion to the bottom of the screen. Gregory going to throw it into the end zone. Incomplete intended for Matthews. If he caught that, that probably would have been a safety. So the offense is underperforming massively right now <laughs> second down and 10 from the one yard line just inside the one yard line actually we got to go about 99 yards and a quarter Gregory gonna throw it again and throws it out of bounds to Matthews once again the intended target Lozano on the coverage one of the best cornerbacks of our 12 schools. He is the definition of shutdown. He doesn't have a lot of interceptions, but you don't see a lot of touchdowns on him. They're down to 10 from the one yard line. I form nation, and now they're gonna finally run it. Matthews breaks loose past the 10 at the 15 yard line. He got popped by Ralph William, and that was his 48th tackle of the season. Great run 
by Matthews, who is now over 1,100 rushing yards on the season. He also has eight touchdowns. He's fumbled the ball six times, though, having a little case of the dropsies. He also has 10 catches, 162 yards, and a score. Gregory to throw it again. A side connects with Brandon Lee, and that's only going to get them a yard or two. Lee with his 14th reception on the season. He now has 130 yards, and he also has one score. Gregory, 2 of 8 today, 11 yards. Just abysmal. Hot routing a receiver, 3 to the bottom of the screen. Gregory is going to take off. And he stiff arms Greg Ford, or tries to at least, and picks up six yards. Nice tackle by Ford. His 15th on the season. That'll make it third down and three. Big play here. Thunderbirds need to get down here and take a lead if they want a chance at winning this game. Gregory to throw again. He's hit as he throws, but he connects with the tight end for the first down at the 28-yard line. Mustangs brought pressure right up the middle, and they went unblocked. But a nice throw with pressure right in his face. Cowbells ring. Can you hear them? Sorry, I'm in the holiday spirit, folks. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Much love from me to you. Matthews with a carry. He's going to lose a yard on that play. Sims, the left end on the tackle for a loss. He's had an outstanding season. The Cal Poly Mustangs have three players on the defensive line, and for most of the season, Sims was leading that defensive line in sacks, and he is a non-subscriber player. Second down and 10. Gregory going to drop back and throw it from the shotgun. Throws off his back foot. Dangerous pass completed to Prince McCutcheon for, I don't know, two yards. Okay, they gave him credit for five. They gave him forward progress. Still not a very great play. That was a very dangerous pass. And I'm surprised it wasn't returned for an interception touchdown. Third down and five at the 33-yard line. Gregory to throw, and that was almost intercepted again. Yeah, the Thunderbirds are going to have to punt the football away here. Well, at least it wasn't a drive that ended in a turnover again. Webb on for the punt. From the 33-yard line of Southern Utah. Back deep to return, Malik Higgins. He has almost 300 punt return yards on the year. And he's going to get some more here. And he is now up to 300 yards on punt returns. McCutcheon on the tackle. Let's see if we can't get some points on the board here in the first half. I was expecting Cal Poly to... Make something happen. Eric Spears Jr. is in the game at quarterback, by the way. Taking over for Connor. Not sure if he was injured or they just took him out. But we get to see our other subscriber quarterback get some playing time. He came into this game with 252 passing yards, two scores, two picks, 116 rushing yards, and five touchdowns. So he's had some playing time. There's a nice completion to Johnson over the middle, close to the first down marker. And they'll mark him just shy. Third and inches upcoming for the Mustangs. Probably going to get Spears Jr. some playing time for the last couple games anyway. Just so he doesn't decide to transfer. Not saying he's taking over for Connor, but he does get a first down here. Nice scramble for two yards. But we got to get him some more playing time so he doesn't decide to transfer in the offseason. Because we don't really have any say in where he wants to transfer so we want to try to keep our subscriber players on the subscriber teams play action from Spears deep shot over the middle completes it again for a first down that was Robinson that time his first catch of the game oh he's looking nice so far he is the higher overall quarterback of the two but Alexander Connor outperformed him by a lot in the spring game Spears on the option, pitches out to Lozano, and picks up nine yards. You can see the offense changes just a little bit once they put Spears in there. They're letting the quarterback run a little bit more, take off, do some options. And his throw power is a little bit higher than Connors. 
Play action. Spears throws it out to the fullback. Brock in the open field, taken down at the 25 yard line. Three consecutive completions to start it off for Spears today. I know he doesn't have a whole lot of stats or playing time this year, but when I have played with him, he has been one of the most fun quarterbacks to play with. Because usually it's a, you know in cleanup time against backups, and I'm just slinging it with him. Just like he is right now, deep to the end zone, C.J. Moreland on coverage with a nice deflection. How often do we see this? Not often at all. Usually that's a touchdown. How do you guys like the Southern Utah white jerseys the all white the ice I love them I think they're pretty slick second down and 10 after Spears finally throws his first incomplete pass of the game pressured and over the middle throws another incomplete pass that was intended for Malik Higgins probably for the best that he didn't catch it because he would have been destroyed by the safety Sir Bryce can Third down and 10 yards to go. They are in field goal range. Just about. It'll be about 42 yard field goal from here. But Spears has other ideas. Takes a shot. Deflected away intended for Johnson. So we might see the field goal unit now. And they will attempt the field goal, folks. This is a pretty long one for these kickers. If you're looking to be a kicker, that's a good idea. We need 12 of them. The kick is up. And it is good, so the Mustangs get on the board first. It's 3-0 with 131 remaining here in the first half. Not a very thrilling first half of play right now. A lot of turnovers. I mean, it's a great defensive game if that's what you're into. Which I do like a defensive game. But I also like high scoring. I like close games. I like blowouts. If Whatever it is. If it's football, I like it. Don't matter to me. Freeman and Matthews back to return. And Freeman will have this one from his own end zone. Taken down at the 19-yard line. Only 40 yards of offense so far for Southern Utah. 124 for Cal Poly. Of course, the Mustangs have had 12 more plays on offense than the Thunderbirds. Can Owen Gregory find a rhythm here today? Will they attempt some running plays, perhaps? We've got Cameron Matthews and Brandon Lee. These are both great athletes. And you're not even using them. And Gregory will throw it. No, he's going to take off. And he's getting close to the first down marker. Picks up nine yards. He's very dangerous when he's on the move. But in these sub versus sub games, it has not been the case. They really have had no answer on offense in any of these games. Second down and one. Gregory going to throw it again, and it hits Freeman in the side. I don't think he ever saw the pass. Now to bring up third down and one. If it was me, I'd be handing it off to Brandon Lee right up the middle. They are in goal line formation. Tight end in motion to the top. And they're going to throw it out of the goal line again, this time to Matthews, and he's going to lose three yards. That is a head scratcher, folks. So the Thunderbirds are going to punt the football away yet again as they go three and out. Started off the drive good with a nine-yard run from Gregory, and it just snowballed from there, and they got nothing out of it. Back deep to return, Malik Higgins from his own 34 yard line and gets it up to the 42 nice return he's got 18 yards on punt returns today nothing too crazy he's at exactly 300 punt return yards on the season now and we're going to see some more Eric Spears here under center he's going to throw it though and a nice pass out to Johnson. And Johnson is going to take this all the way for the touchdown. My goodness, high-stepping for the last five yards. That was a 58-yard touchdown pass. And that was just so easy. It's 
nice catch and run. That was Spears Jr.'s third touchdown pass of the season, eighth total touchdown of the year. Cal Poly now with a chance to take a 10-point lead over Southern Utah. I don't know if we'll be seeing Alexander Connor again in this game. I hope if he was injured that he's all right, and we'll see him for the rest of the year. Extra point is good, so it's 10-0. Cal Poly over Southern Utah. As the Thunderbirds are desperately trying to win a game to become bowl eligible. Their next game, they will be taking on UC Davis, so another subscriber versus subscriber game. And if they lose that game, I will not be able to play with Southern Utah again this year. Because they will not have a bowl game. On for the kickoff. Yeah, that was a nice high kick. All the way two yards deep in the end zone. Freeman on the return and taken down at the 20 yard line. I'm going to go get my pillow and take a nap while Southern Utah's on offense, guys. I suggest you do the same. Gregory under center. And now they're going to run the football, and Matthews goes absolutely nowhere. Picks up maybe a yard. And it looks like the Thunderbirds are content with just running the clock out and going into the half down 10 points. Or not, they're in the shotgun, they might throw it here. Who knows? I have no answers for any questions about the subscriber versus subscriber games. They are running the clock out. But Gregory's going to throw it anyway. Down, deflected away. Very dangerous pass. Could have been a pick six. They should have just kept running the football, run the clock out. I mean, really, at this point, they're better off just kneeling it three times and then punting. Because that's the equivalent of their offense right now. Third down and nine. I formation. Tight end to the top of the screen. And they give it out to Brandon Lee, who's going to pick up four yards. And they should have been giving him the football all game so far. Him and Matthews. But Cal Poly calls a timeout. They're going to get the football back with a little bit of time to work with. And maybe get on the scoreboard again. Higgins back to return. And he will return it from his 33-yard line and gets it up to the 41. So they got two timeouts left. And they're in decent field position. Maybe a couple nice passes downfield can get you into field goal range and you can take a 13-0 lead into the half. Spears under center, two tight end set. And Lozano in the backfield. Spears is going to throw it right over the middle. It's picked off again. Bryce King has his second of the game, second of his career. Malik Higgins saves the touchdown. Not a very good throw. That's the third interception of the year for Eric Spears Jr., the backup quarterback for the Mustangs. Not sure what happened on that play. But it wasn't good for the Mustangs, that is for sure. So now Gregory with a chance at some points. Get a nice deep pass down the middle of the field. Call a timeout. Gregory will throw it. He's hit as he throws, and it's almost completed. Nice deflection at the last second. And that leaves the Thunderbirds with six ticks left on the clock. That is enough time for two plays, though. They do them quickly, just like they just did. Shotgun formation, Lee and Matthews to the sides of Gregory. He will throw it again. And he's going to take a deep shot towards the end zone. And it's caught. Prince McCutcheon comes down with it for the touchdown as time expires. That is Prince McCutcheon's fourth touchdown reception of the season. Unbelievable call by the coach. Not settling for a field goal attempt. He wanted all of it and called the Hail Mary. And what a play to get his team into the game. Nice touchdown pass from Gregory, his eighth on the season. 
My goodness. He was hit as he throws it, as he threw it though. So hopefully he's all right. Kick is up and good. 10-7 is the score. Headed into the half, guys. Ended with some fireworks after a bunch of takeaways in the first quarter. Hopefully you've stuck around this whole time. If you're new and you want to get a player in this dynasty, we have 12 schools. And if you want to get one on one of those schools, join our Discord today. I will have the link in the description of this video, in the chat, and in the comments section below. I hope to see you guys all in there. We've got 55 plus members right now. We're growing every day. And if you want to get a player, go on in there, and we will get you a created player in the offseason. And eventually, you'll be into our Pro League in Madden 06. And Freeman on the return. Left side, Jaquan Freeman starting off the second half with a great return up to the 43-yard line. My goodness. Thunderbirds with all the momentum right now. See on the bottom, Boise State lost to Fresno State. So San Diego will be taking on the number one ranked Fresno State Bulldogs next week. That will be an interesting game. Hopefully the Toreros can pull off that upset. First and 10 from the 42-yard line. Gregory hands to Matthews, accelerates past Greg Ford, still going. He has the first down and more up to the 26-yard line. And now Southern Utah is in field goal range. They can tie it up as long as they hold on to that football. This would be another huge upset if the Thunderbirds could win this game against Cal Poly. We saw Northern Colorado beat them. So they are not untouchable. Gregory to throw. Quick pass. Almost intercepted. Another dangerous pass intended for Turner. Not sure why they keep doing those little out routes like that. You've got Jaquan Freeman and Prince McCutcheon. Those are deep threats that really have not had great seasons at all. But that is due to the quarterback play. Gregory to throw it again. Oh, he is sacked. That was Paxton Erdley coming through. Pretty much unblocked. That's his fourth sack on the year. He now has 15 tackles, uh, eight tackles for a loss, four sacks, a pass deflection, and a fumble recovery. But third and 16, now that's going to knock him out of field goal range. They're going to need all those yards back that they just lost. High snap for Gregory, it disrupts the play, and it's almost completed out to McCutcheon. That would have been another touchdown. Great deflection at the last second. That's going to bring up 4th and 16. Are they going to kick a field goal here? No, they are not. They're going to punt the ball from the 32-yard line. My goodness, I would just go for it at that point. And that is a very high punt. And it goes, it goes through the field goal post. Oh, my goodness. So a completely pointless drive for the Thunderbirds. Ends in a punt from the 32-yard line. They have one of the most uninteresting offenses in the country. Spears is still in the game right now for the Mustangs. And he is going to be sacked. That is Adam Joseph, his second sack of the ball game. His fifth on the season. Not bad for the defensive tackle. Pretty much came through on block again, just like his previous sack of the game. That'll make it second down and 18. The defenses came to play today, folks. Both teams have five players on defense. Thunderbirds have two defensive linemen, one linebacker and two defensive backs. And Spears over the middle, and he finds Robinson. And that is a personal foul face mask. That's a first down. And the Cal Poly Mustangs, they have three defensive linemen, no linebackers, and two defensive backs, one corner and one free safety. So very evenly matched defenses, I think. The only difference is Southern Utah actually has more weapons on offense than Cal Poly. But they just can't seem to get it going in these games. Lozano up the middle. He only picks up two yards. And that'll bring up second down and eight. Actually, they only gave him credit for one yard. My eyes are better than the referees, I swear. Spears under center, Lozano in the backfield, Spears to throw it, left side, picked off, and it's Donald Lee Jr., the middle linebacker, that is his fifth interception on the season, and my goodness, 
Doesn't matter who's that quarterback for Cal Poly today, they're just gonna throw picks. So first and ten now for Southern Utah. With a chance to take the lead or tie it up. Shotgun formation. Gregory gonna throw it. Right, oh my goodness, another play where it should have been an interception. I don't know what's going on with these quarterbacks, but they don't like to throw to the right team, apparently. High formation. Let's see if they'll run it. And they're finally going to run the football. Nice run by Matthews, plowing over the defensive end. Only picked up four yards on the run. That'll bring up third down and six. Both teams struggling on third down conversions today. Two of seven, the Thunderbirds. Two of six for the Mustangs. Single back set, two tight ends. Brandon Lee is the tight end on the bottom. And they will play action. Lee is wide open. And they take a deep shot instead to Freeman. And that goes nowhere except for to the dirt. So yet again, the Thunderbirds offense stalls out with a chance to take the lead over the Mustangs. Fourth down and six. They're going to punt the football away, possibly. Nope. Owen Gregory is still on the field. The offense comes out. They are going to go for it. But they wouldn't go for it from the 32-yard line, right? That makes sense. Shotgun formation. Three receivers to the top. Gregory going to try to take off, and he is sacked. And let's see who got him. Paxton Erdley gets him again. My goodness. It's his third sack of the game. Wow. Cal Poly's offense gets back on the field. Let's see if Eric Spears Jr. can throw it to the correct team now. And he is hit as he throws it again. That pass is way out of bounds. Incomplete. Owen Gregory, 6 of 20 today. Eric Spears Jr., 5 of 11. So all the quarterbacks are struggling. And I'm pretty sure Connor was injured. He was going to be done for the game. Spears going to hand it off to Lozano. And he is absolutely destroyed in the backfield by Adam Joseph, who's having himself a great game today. Two sacks and three tackles for a loss for him. He now has 19 tackles for the year. Which is more than both of the defensive tackles for Cal Poly. Spears going to throw it. Rolling out. Quick pass. He hits Malik Higgins. He breaks the tackle. Malik Higgins is going to take this all the way for the touchdown. No way Bryce King is going to catch him. Higgins with a crazy touchdown reception. His sixth of the year. And with that, he is close to 1,000 yards receiving if he does get it. He will be our second subscriber receiver with 1,000 yards receiving in a year. Mr. Highlight was the first to do it. And he did that against Alabama A&M earlier in the week. And with the extra point being good, it is now 17-7. Mustangs pulling away a little bit. They're on top by 10 points. Mustangs on for the kickoff. Jaquan Freeman, Cameron Matthews, back deep to return. Still waiting for one of them to have kick return for a touchdown this season. They combined for just about 1,500 kick return yards on the year. And this will be Matthews. And take it down at the 22 yard line. So nothing exciting. Only 115 yards of offense today for the Thunderbirds, over 220 for Cal Poly. And Gregory is still in the ball game. 250 remaining here in the third quarter. Gregory to throw it. Quick pass and only picks up maybe two or three yards. 
Not a very good throw or decision. This offense just can't seem to get anything going. That'll bring up second down and eight. Gregory out in the shotgun formation again. Matthews to his right. And he's going to throw it again. Quick pass. And that is the completion, but only getting, you know, zero yards. So, again, very exciting play. I love how they're taking chances down the field. It's not like their season hangs in the balance or anything. Third down and seven. Gregory. Pressure, and that is incomplete. Joseph Lozano with another massive hit on a receiver. To draw the ball loose, that'll bring up fourth down and seven. So Cal Poly gets the ball back again after a huge touchdown play from Malik Higgins' last drive with a chance to take an even bigger lead than they have now. Here is Malik Higgins, breaks the tackle, and gets up to the 47-yard line. And we will see Eric Spears Jr. in this offense yet again. First down and 10, Spears going to throw it. All day to throw it, goes deep downfield, overthrows Johnson by a couple yards. That'll bring up second down and 10. Crowd waiting patiently to erupt for a huge touchdown again. Play action, Spears over the middle, overthrows his target again. It was coming right across the middle wide open. And he is not the most accurate quarterback in the league. His throw power is very high, he's, a, he's an athletic build. So his accuracy is a little bit lower than normal. But when he catches a hot streak, look out. Third down and 10. Spears under center. He will throw it again. Deep down the field, wide open is Desmond Lewis, and he's gone for the touchdown. Lewis, my goodness. 53-yard touchdown reception. And there's that arm strength. Perfect spiral over three defenders. And that was C.J. Moreland getting torched yet again, folks. I should make a low light uh, video for C.J. Moreland getting beat every single time. It might be 20 minutes long. And with the extra point, it is now 24 to 7. Southern Utah. About to get blown out right now. Their offense has done nothing. They had one big Hail Mary before the half ended, or as the half ended. As the clock struck zero. And that is pretty much the only good play on offense they've had all day. We've seen Gregory scramble a couple times, but nothing for any big gains. On the return is Freeman, and he doesn't get far, and there's a clipping penalty, so they're just shooting themselves in the foot every single drive. And they'll have to start the drive from the 11. 130 remains in the third quarter. Gregory under center, and now they're going to start to try to run the football. Brandon Lee is still up, breaking tackles, and picks up seven yards. Ralph William has injured his ankle on the play. That's the subscriber, free safety. Hopefully he's all right as he tries to walk it off. That doesn't look too good, folks. That would be a huge loss for the Mustangs secondary. They would just be down to Joseph Lozano. Which is no scrub, of course, but 
Having two non-subscriber safeties is very dangerous. Second down and three. Gregory to throw it. Over the middle, caught. First down up past the 30 yard line of the 33. And already Gregory's having a little more success without William on the field. High formation. Gregory play action, fooled everybody, takes a shot down the field, deflected away, almost picked off again. That was intended for Prince McCutcheon. If that ball, if the ball was actually thrown a little bit higher, McCutcheon got his hands on it, he would be gone. Oh no, Ralph William, broken ankle, done for seven weeks. Oh my goodness. I don't think we're gonna be seeing him again for the, even the bowl game. His completion over the middle of the 40-yard line. That's a huge loss for Cal Poly. Definitely not what they needed right now. With the win here today, Cal Poly will remain in first place. Tied with San Diego for the Pac-10 title. But they just lost their star safety. Who had eight interceptions on the year coming into this game. And three forced fumbles. Gregory to throw, quick pass, Matthews has the edge, has the first down and more still going, past the 40, crushed by Lozano at the 30 yard line, huge play as the third quarter ticks down. So we've had two star players get injured on defense this season, Rob Orlandi, middle linebacker for the Dayton Flyers, he might not make it back for the bowl game, and now Ralph William, I believe is done for the season. Cal Poly on top, 24-7 as the third quarter ends. We have yet to see any offensive players with any major injuries. There was mostly just suspensions early on in the year. You know, Cam Sanders was suspended for a long time for VMI. Smash Jackson for the Dayton Flyers was suspended for three games. And before those three games, he was leading the country in touchdowns. So who knows, he might have been in the Heisman watch list if he had not been suspended. Gregory in the shotgun, Matthews to his right. Second down and 10. He will throw it. Quick pass, deflected away, very dangerous throw again. I don't know why they keep going for these short out routes. They're not working. You cannot attack the flats when you don't have possession receivers on your team. You got two beasts at receiver. Take some deep shots downfield like you are right now, and you might have something, as you just found Cameron Matthews for the touchdown. Nice throw from Gregory off his back foot. Linebacker did not stand a chance in that matchup. That is Cameron Matthews' second touchdown reception of the year. He now has 10 total touchdowns this season. Gregory now with nine touchdown passes on the year. And that gets his team back into it. It's going to be 24-14 with an extra point here. And the extra point is good, so it is now 24-14. But the Mustangs offense is coming back on the field, guys. And they are very dangerous anytime they touch the field. Back to return, Desmond Lewis and Malik Higgins. Higgins with two kick turns for touchdowns this season. Desmond Lewis has zero. They do have a thousand combined kick return yards though. And this will be returned by Desmond Lewis up past the 20, the 30, still going. Desmond Lewis is loose. Desmond Lewis is going to have his first career kick return for a touchdown, folks. My goodness. What a spark. He just exploded past the 20-yard line, and you never saw him again. Unbelievable return. And just like that, Cal Poly's on top, 31-14 over Southern Utah. So with that, I'm not expecting a Southern Utah comeback today. 
And the extra point is up, and it is good. 31-14 is the score. What a huge play from Desmond Lewis. My goodness. He has a receiving touchdown today and a kick return for a score. Now Southern Utah will be on for the return. Matthews and Freeman back deep. Standing at their own goal line. Mason on for the kickoff. And a nice high kick yet again to the goal line. Freeman returns it up the middle, taken down at the 24. Owen Gregory going to take the field again. He's been a little bit better today than he was the last subscriber versus subscriber game, that is for sure. In the shotgun formation, he will throw it. And throws it left side, deflected away. I don't know why they keep attacking the flats. It's doing nothing. you got to try some shots downfield, especially being down 17 points late in the game. Gregory to throw it again. Pressure. Deep shot downfield, finally, and it's caught. Brandon Lee has it at the 20, all the way down inside the 10-yard line. What a play, the fullback. My goodness. Been preaching it all game. You gotta give the fullback the ball. You gotta take deep shots, so why not do both? Huge reception for the fullback. That gets him over 200 receiving yards on the year. All the way down to the 9-yard line. Fantastic play. Gregory, 1,689 yards, nine touchdowns. Get your 10th touchdown, buddy. Let's go. First and goal. Gregory going to try to take off. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage and gets past it for maybe one or two yards. Avoiding the sack. That was Paxton Erdley on the tackle. He's been a force today. Now under five minutes to play. Both teams do have all three timeouts. Second and goal from the eight-yard line. High formation. Gregory to throw it. No, he's going to take off. Left side. Stiff arms the defender. And he fumbles the football. Who recovered it? It was Cal Poly. Oh, my goodness. There's holding on the offense. It doesn't even matter. Another turnover for the Thunderbirds. That's the eighth turnover of the game total. And Paxton Erdley gets the forced fumble. His first forced fumble of his career. Defensive player of the game. Paxton Erdley, folks. Career day for him. He only came into this game with 13 tackles. 7 for loss, 3 sacks, a pass deflection, and a fumble recovery. And he's closing in on 8 tackles, I think. Here's Lozano. He's dropped for no gain. Only 13 yards rushing on eight carries for him today. Second down and 10 from the seven yard line. Upcoming. If you guys are wondering, I did adjust all of the pass run ratios for every team. So. There's no reason the Thunderbirds should be throwing it as much as they have today. And a nice catch by Robinson. Close to the marker. Makes it third down and two. So he's laid out for it. Give it off to Lozano. Get that first down. Three touchdowns, two picks today for Eric Spears Jr. And they will give it to Lozano. He falls forward, but did he get it? No, he did not. Fourth and inches. And it looks like they're going to punt the football away, which is a smart play. I know the crowd wants him to go for it, but there's no need. Your defense has been playing pretty good today. Let's punt it away and play field position. Taking as much time off the clock as they can. And a very long kick all the way to the 33-yard line. Freeman on the return. He got crushed by Malik Higgins and Johnson, the other receiver. 
So they'll start off at the 44-yard line. Gregory still in the game. Pretty good field position to start off. 313 remaining in the game. Single back formation. Gregory to throw it. Pressure. He's hit as he throws it. That pass goes nowhere. And that'll bring up second down and 10 as Gregory stands up after that vicious hit. Gregory in the shotgun again. Matthews to his left. You see Brandon Lee at the bottom in the slot. And Gregory will throw it. Pressure takes off. Smart decision here. And picks up five yards. He's only got 13 yards today and on eight carries. So he hasn't been really getting anything going today. A couple nice passes. But it is third down and five now. Definitely a manageable situation. Thunderbirds, 4 of 11 on third down conversions today. Gregory to throw it, and he is sacked. Lost a lot of yards. And it's going to be fourth down and long now as the linebacker comes through on the blitz. Lost six yards on the play. That's going to bring up fourth down and 11. Gregory sacked again. Oh my goodness. Gregory has hindered his head on the play as well. What a hit. And they're not going to show a replay of that, are they? Of course not. He got absolutely destroyed. And they're just going to run the ball now. Picks up about three or four yards. Nothing left to do but run the clock out. Owen Gregory out three weeks with a pinched nerve after getting rocked. So we're not going to see him against UC Davis. That means we're going to have to watch Goolsby play quarterback. The GOAT. Clock ticking out. Less than two minutes now. Spears hands it off to the fullback and Jericho Stevens drops him for a loss. First time we've called his name today. He came into the game with 21 tackles, 5 for a loss, 3 sacks, 2 pass deflections, and a fumble recovery. Third down and 9. Draining the clock. Lozano in the backfield. They're going to throw the football with Spears. He's actually going to take off. Hurdles the defender and dives. Picks up the first down. What a play. And that will actually get Cal Poly into positive rushing yards today. And he taunts here. He's going to draw a 15-yard penalty. Not very smart for the backup quarterback. That'll make it first down and 25. Lewis, player of the game for Cal Poly. Bryce King, player of the game for Southern Utah with his two interceptions. Desmond Lewis had a receiving touchdown and a kick return for a touchdown. I formation for the Mustangs. As they're just grounding and pounding right now. They give it off to the fullback. And he is stuffed. Only gets a couple yards. That makes it second down and 23. We'll probably see one more play here from the Mustangs, and the clock will run out. Dum 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 da da dum 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 Lozano up the middle gets nothing, and that. My friends should do it. Cal Poly with another win on the year. Southern Utah drops to 5-6. and six. They need a win next week against UC Davis 
to advance to the bowl season. 31-14 is the final. Calpali improves the 8-2 on the season. There's Connor. Not sure what happened to him today, if he was injured or not. But we never saw him again in the game. But it looks like he's all right. He's running around, dancing, celebrating with his teammates after a huge win. Mustangs only two games left on the year. Three hundred twenty-five yards of offense for Cal Poly. Uh, yeah, Cal Poly. Thirteen first downs. Only eight yards rushing today, which is insane. Especially with Raul Lozano the third. He's an absolute beast. Drew T on the beat. Description has his info right there. If you want to contact him for beats. Lozano only 16 rushing yards today. 101 yards receiving for Desmond Lewis. Higgins with 64 yards on the one catch for a score. Lewis had a drop today as well. That's only his second drop on the season. Joseph Lozano, five tackles today. Paxton Erdley also had five. That's the most he's ever had in a game. He has 18 tackles on the year now. And he also now has nine tackles for a loss and five sacks. Lozano had a pick today, his third of the year. Erdley with his first career um, fumble forced. He also had a fumble recovery. He was doing everything today for the Mustangs defense. 96-yard kick turn for a touchdown for Desmond Lewis. Owen Gregory done for next week. If they do win that game, we'll see him back for the bowl game. If they actually get a bowl game. Just because you win six games doesn't automatically mean that you'll actually get a bowl game. But that just means you're bowl eligible. I've actually had teams go seven and five and not receive a bowl bit, which it hurt my feelings just a little bit. Three drops today for Turner for the Thunderbirds. No stats for Brandon Red, the offensive lineman. Lots of tackles today. Lots of players got playing time for the Thunderbirds on defense. Adam Joseph, five tackles. Three for a loss and two sacks. He now has 21 tackles on the season. 13 tackles for a loss and five sacks. Bunch of deflections today. Moreland had one that actually saved a touchdown, shockingly. He had a pretty decent day. He did allow that big touchdown reception to Desiree Lewis. Players of the game, King Bates Matthews. Lewis, Erdley, and Eric Spears Jr. for the Mustangs. And our next Mustangs football game, they will be hosting the uh, Columbia and from the Big East Conference. That'll be out next week. That's a Week 13 matchup. Our next Thunderbirds game, they will be hosting the UC Davis Aggies. And they need that win to become bowl eligible. Our next game, which will be out tomorrow is going to be North Dakota State traveling to take on South Dakota State, ranked 24th in the nation. Big 12 matchup. That'll be a good one. North Dakota State needs a win for ball eligibility as well. I'll see you guys with that one tomorrow. Take it easy, guys.